everyone, Gavin back from ThriveWP.com. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how to install WordPress um, it, with two methods. One would be with a one-click installer, the other would be manually through something like an FTP program, uh, something like Valzilla, which is quite a popular FTP program. So we'll look at both methods and we'll walk through both of them. The way I'm going to do it today is um, I'm going to try and do it as, as kind of authentically as possible. So basically run through every step that you would have to run through. I haven't really got anything you know set up so I can kind of make steps quicker. Um, so you know if we hit snags we hit snags and you know you will probably hit the same kind of snag. So we'll, we'll work through it and see how we go. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the one click install option. And you do that through your own hosting um, control panel. So most hosts will come along with a control panel or a C panel, and they would likely look something like this one. Okay, uh, and somewhere in there you will have maybe a one-click uh, option or applications, um, a WordPress manager. So that that is what we're referring to when we say one-click option. Um, so what you do is you go to your your uh, installer, okay, and then you'd have a look and you would add a new site. Um, usually it would automatically pick up the domain if your domain is linked to your hosting and we're assuming at this point that it is. Okay, um, let's just uninstall our old option here a second. That would help, wouldn't it? Okay, so like I was saying, we are assuming that your domain is linked to your hosting and what we mean by that is that you've kind of bought them from the same, both the same company. Um, if you've got hosting from one company and your domain name from another, then we're assuming that you've already pointed your domain name, which is your web address, to your hosting. Um, so that when you visit that web address, the files that will be pulled up are from your hosting. You do that by changing the name servers or editing the DNS records, but we're not going to touch on that today we are assuming that your your domain and your hosting are kind of linked together and, and often that is the case um, especially for people starting out with WordPress they'll they'll most likely go with you know a kind of easy quite affordable shared hosting option that comes with a domain it's all linked together there's nothing to worry about so that's what we're assuming so we've clicked on our WordPress manager or one-click installer okay and you get presented with a page that usually will be, it will look similar to this, maybe not exactly, but similar. Okay, and we want to click add new site. It will automatically pick up the domain. Um, I would suggest not touching anything else, make it as easy as possible, just follow the installer. So click install. Let that run for a moment. It shouldn't take too long. And then that's it. That is literally it. Your WordPress site is now installed. The database is set up. The files are all installed. Everything's done in the background. That's it. Your site's sorted. Now, this is an important step. Uh, it's really important to make sure that you save your username and password because as soon as you click back or home, uh, you won't be able to retrieve those again. Okay, so we're just going to save those in our file here for a second. Okay, so if we click back now, it'll now tell us that we've got an installation, we can manage that, we can uninstall it, and so on. So we can go back to uh, our main page now, and when you click on WordPress, it will tell you that there's one that's installed. You can then go to Manage, okay, and you can manage your site, you can enable uh, security updates only, you can enable all updates and what that's talking about is the WordPress core software itself and this is probably one reason why we may suggest it's better to install WordPress manually. Uh, it's purely because what tends to happen is WordPress Going via a hosting service um, means that you might not necessarily get the most up-to-date version of WordPress. So if you, you think about it similarly to a, 
uh, Android phone, for example, or a Samsung phone, or any other manufacturer, when Android updates their operating system, they push out those updates. But you tend not to get those until your specific manufacturer of phone has then incorporated their stuff with it or pushed it through their systems. It's kind of a similar thing with cPanel control panels in hosting. Uh, some will be great and you'll get the latest version straight away, sometimes you won't. Um, and that can be a bit of an issue with security sometimes, so we prefer to install it manually. But of course, for, for a lot of people, this is the easiest option. Um, I mean, we have our site installed already, um, literally within a couple of clicks. So anyway, we'll, we'll leave that now. You know the reasons why. So you can change your admin password, uh, you can change your database password, and you can also back up your site through your hosting panel, most likely. Like I say, they're all going to be different. So what we'll do is we'll visit the site now, okay? And there we go, this is our WordPress site. Uh, at the moment, it's all just full of, of um, you know, template dummy content. Um, you know, it's just using the basic WordPress theme. And you can edit and adjust that as you'd like. And to get to your admin panel, you would go to your domain, do a forward slash, then WP uh, hyphen admin, okay? And then what you would need to do is you would need to log in. Now, remember, you've saved your details, or we hope you have. Okay, so we'll use our login credentials now to uh, log into our new site. Okay, and once we've done that, we'll be into our admin area. Okay, so this is the back end admin area of your WordPress website. And then you can do all sorts of different things, changing your theme, adding your content, and so on. But obviously this video is, is focusing on installing WordPress. So we've, we've achieved that, okay? Um, so that's, that's how you do it with a one-click installer. Now, it's very different for um, doing it manually. Now, we'll have a look at that now. We'll just clear out this install first, okay? So let's just manage this. Here we go. So let's install this installation first. And we'll go back. We'll make sure all the files are removed. Yeah. And we'll make sure we don't have any databases left over. Nope. Okay, so. How we install WordPress manually is fairly straightforward uh, if you can follow inst these instructions, basically. Um, what we'll do is we'll go to the wordpress.org site first. Okay, and we need to download WordPress. So you click Get WordPress here, and then download that. Now I've already done that, so I've already got the WordPress files. The next thing you need to do, okay, is in your, uh, let's just clear out that, in your control panel, you need to create a database, okay? So the database is where data is essentially stored about your site and helps your site function. Without it, WordPress won't work, okay? So we need to create a database and it is literally as simple as giving it a name. So for this example, I'm just going to create our database with that name. So that is the name of our database, okay? Nice and simple, that's it, that's our name. Now, what we then need to do, now we've got our database created, we've got our files downloaded, we need to upload our files to the server, okay? And like I said earlier, we're gonna look at the FTP method. I mean, you can use the, the built-in file manager, but there's a, there's a, kind of it's a bit fiddly and it doesn't always work shall we say <laughs> but you can do it you could go to upload you need to make sure that you're in your main home directory which is usually public HTML okay you would go to upload you would select your file um, in our case we'd go to downloads and we would select the uh, zipped file and upload it okay once that zipped file was uploaded, we then need to unzip it in the server. 
uh, and you know once we have our files then we can kind of start installing WordPress but we're not looking at this option although you can do it that way we're going to be looking at the FTP option now the best FTP file program uh, depends on people's preferences some will say you know it's FileZilla others will say it's something else now we use FileZilla we prefer it uh, and that's the program we're going to use in this instance so we have FileZilla which is an FTP program, um, what we need to do is we need to create a new connection. Okay, so we've we've kind of got our new connection here. We're just going to um, make sure our credentials are right and our password for our FTP. Now, just a note on passwords for your FTP and your database and so on. Quite often, um, your password to log into your control panel will also be the password for your databases and your FTP accounts. Not always, but quite often. So remember that when you're, you know, trying to set up your FTP, you're trying to add information about your database, it's likely to be the same password. Okay, so we've added our FTP credentials. We can click OK. All right, and then what we can do is we connect to that site and uh, it should load there we go so this is the file system of our server now these are our local files we're going to go to our public HTML because that's where our files should be for our website we're going to find our unzipped um, WordPress folder okay and these are the files for WordPress and the folders okay so we need to select them all and all we need to do is literally just drag them across and let go and then what you'll see is they'll all start uploading to our server and you can see the progress down below now this might take a little while um, depending on your connection as well so have a little patience um, but once they're all uploaded to the server we've then kind of done the hard bit that's it then then we can go to our site and we can follow the installation wizard so it's not it's not too strenuous really. Um, if you have pop-ups like this, usually it's just um, a case of clicking uh, apply to current queue only and always use this action. So it just thinks that there's already a file there when it's not. So you just kind of say, yeah, overwrite it, it's fine. Okay, so we'll leave that run um, and we'll pause the video and we'll kind of continue once that's done. So you don't have to wait for us, okay. Okay, so all our files are now uploaded to our server. Okay, that's everything we need to run our website. Um, so what we need to do now, okay, uh, we'll just have a quick recap. So we've got our database created, we've got our files installed, okay. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to go to our domain where we have put all our files, okay. If we just refresh this page, and it will automatically start us in the setup process. Okay, you can select your language, um, you know, whether that be United Kingdom or US or wherever, basically. Um, you know, you can do that. We're going to set English UK. Click continue. Okay, so now basically what you need to do is just follow the prompts, read what it says clearly, and go from there. So the next bit is we need to tell the WordPress installation where our database is and how to access it. Okay, so our database name, okay, is what we had a look at earlier. So we'll just go back to our databases in our C panel and we'll show you that. Seems like our internet's just suddenly decided it's going to go slow. So we'll add ours in, which was uh, underscore UK. So that was our database name. Okay. Our username is actually that. And our password we popped over here. So we could use it. Is that. Okay. So that's our database name, our username for it, and the password. You can leave the host to whatever. WordPress has already filled. Um, with a table prefix you can leave it as that, it's not a problem at all, or you can change it, you just need to ensure 
that it's something short and simple uh, with the underscore afterwards. So we can just put, you know, TWP if we wanted to. Um, click Submit. What happens then is WordPress is then installed uh, and set up, and then you can go and run the installation. Okay, so that's the first part. Your site now is kind of pretty much installed. The database is all set up, everything else. You need to give your site a title. So we'll just say site uh, title for now. Now, this username and password is the username and password you're going to use to access the admin area of your website. Okay, so I'm just going to say uh, username is Gavin. We'll copy that password and pop it down there a second. So we'll use that password, that's fine. You want to use a strong password and it's really important that you do that. Um, WordPress is a really popular website software and it's very, very good and it's very secure. But because it's so good, you know, people, hackers do like to try and hack it. And so using a secure password is a, is a really important first step. Okay, so we've done that. If you don't want search engines to see your site just yet, you can select that option um, and then click install WordPress. Make sure though, if you do turn that on, you really want to make sure that you turn it off, otherwise your site will probably never be shown in search engines. Um, so we'll install WordPress. Uh, duh, 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 duh. You must provide an email address. Oh, silly us, we missed the email address. So let's just pop our email address in there and install. Okay, so that's it. Our website is now installed. We can log in to the admin area. Um, so let's just grab our password again for the website. And we'll log in. And there we have it. We've got our WordPress site installed. And we've done that manually through uh, the FTP program. So again, you can see the dummy content of WordPress all installed. You've then got the option to then, um, you know, add your themes, add your content, and what have you. So uh, there we have it, really. Um, that's two, two main ways to install WordPress, okay? Uh, it's not too strenuous, and obviously if you follow through on this video, you can pause when you need to. Um, you can also have a look at the post that we'll link in the bottom of the description of this video. Um, where we have written out a full kind of detailed article on our blog. Um, so that's it. I hope that was really helpful for you. If you liked our videos, um, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Um, and, you know, drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you need any help with your WordPress site or you're maybe you've got your site kind of running and you're now looking to take the next step in your your kind of business and you want to maybe make sure that your website is, is kind of functioning well, is performing well, uh, is, is properly secured and backed up. It might be time to then look at something like our maintenance service. Um, it's there for, for essentially for businesses and, and you know, blog owners that kind of are, I guess, at that point where they're taking their business to the next step and it's, it's you know, the website is, very important asset to your business. Um, so it's something that you want to make sure that is running at its, at its best and isn't, uh, you know, open to hacking or anything else. So we can take care of all that for you along with any other, you know, WordPress support uh, issues. And, um, you know, that's it really. Thanks for watching and we will catch you in the next video.